And I've got the benders in tune, and I love it. I love it. I did change out the third, the the sixth string, to this point zero six zero. And that made a huge difference. Check out the benders. Sounds pretty good. And, you know, I was worried about this bridge, you know, being too, see if I can zoom in, being too high, right? But it actually, it actually is pretty good It because the, the, the angle that that goes over, right, it only goes, it doesn't go real deep down. So it just goes right over the top, just clears that bridge. And there's about where I, I have my benders, right, like that. And uh, about that high. And it did take me a little bit of time to kind of dial in, you know, the back and the middle as far as, you know, how far I wanted it to go down. My advice is, is tighten the middles down so that when you initially bend it down, um, you don't break a string. You know, don't loosen it up real high and then just slam it down. It'll go way too high and you'll probably break a string. So just take your time with that. And that is about how I've got mine set up, if you can see that there. Hey everybody, welcome to Lessons with Troy. I'm Troy Brenningmeyer. Well, in today's video, I've been meaning to install these Sertano benders on my affordable uh, Recording King lap steel with the humbucker pickup that I got. If you've seen a previous video where I talk all about this lap steel and and uh, you know play it for you you can watch that one but in this one um, I got these benders uh, from David Sertano and uh, I tell you I'm just gonna put them on here it should be pretty simple um, there's just two holes here and you just got to make a couple pilot holes and then put the screws in and make sure it's straight and everything but let me show you here how I'm gonna go about this so this uh, recording king has this type of a bridge right um, so if you can see, it's, we'll see how it works with this bridge. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty tall and, and sharp right there, but we'll see. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to butt it right up against the, uh, the back of this bridge here. just right like that. So that'll keep it real straight. You know, I don't have to worry about that. It makes it pretty simple. And the only thing I really need to worry about is making sure that, that, uh, it's going to be, straight with where the strings are going to go into it. I don't want to put it, let me see if I can get a different angle here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But anyways, it needs to be straight with the strings too. You know, I don't want to put it off off center. You know, it needs to be centered with these two, your second string and your third string. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's the plan at least. So you can see right there, just going to butt it right up against the, the back of that bridge and... Just go for it. Um, it should it should be fine. I saw a picture uh, yesterday on Facebook of a guy that installed this, and he left a little bit of space, I think. But um, I talked with David, and he said that it'd be okay. Probably to just put it right up against the back there. And I wanted to show you too. This is kind of neat. So you can see right there on the back of these benders, those little notch or those little pegs there that's where your, the ball end of your string is going to hook on to right the circular part it's going to go around that around those posts each one of those what i'm, I'm going to do is i'm just going to kind of eyeball this and then i'm going to use some tape here and i'm just going to put a piece of tape on each side to try to get it you know lined up right so let me let me tear off a piece this is at least I'm kind of making this up as I go. I 
Okay, so just kind of eyeballing that. I'm just trying to make sure that those grooves or those slots in the bender line up with my second and third strings, right? So once I kind of get it, I just put a little piece of tape there to mark it. I think that's got it pretty good marked. That looks straight to me. Okay, so let me show you how to, how to take this thing apart now. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so you use your, what you're going to want to do is you want to use this dowel here to kind of start poking your, this uh, rod through here to take everything apart. Pop that thing out right there. So that's out. And then take those out. Okay. And then we put this back. And because we got that tape there, now we should be aligned. And I guess a, one way of, of seeing this is, as I'm looking at it now, it looks like this part, this middle part of your bender, right? That's right in between your second and your third string. So that's a good way. So what I'm going to do here, because I'm going to make a couple pilot holes, so I'm just going to take a Sharpie, and I'm going to put it right in the center of each hole. So let me do that now. So now I have a now I have a mark to uh, put my pilot holes, right? So so then I'm just going to take this off, and I uh, I asked David about uh, you know what size bit to use for the pilot holes, and. Uh, He said a two millimeter. He's in France, so they use millimeters. So I figured that's about five sixty fourths of an inch of a bit. Looks like this. Now the screws you're putting in, they look like this. You just have two screws. Pretty simple process. I just, you know, I'm not a carpenter or anything, so everything takes me about ten times as long as it would a normal person. So here's the screws. So you just have two of these. Okay, let's make these drill holes now. Okay, so I just made my two pilot holes here. Let's uh, put the bender on the or the uh, base on there. Make sure I'm centered. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see it's going to go right in there and be flush, flush with that. And just keep in mind, I'm going to have that Sertano logo pointing away from me and this, this part pointing on the back of my lap steel. So let's do that. Okay. Okay, so let's just put, I'm going to get both these started. And then I can finish them off. Okay, let's 
put that bit extender back on here. Slipping a little bit. Just taking it slow so I don't strip it out. I just want to make sure it's flush. And as far as the setting on the screw on the uh, drill, I've got it to the lowest. I didn't want to strip them out, right? So I got it set to the lowest uh, setting to where it, you know, it, it starts. It won't it won't overly tighten it. Okay, that seemed to work. Okay, looks like they're in there. They're flush, I guess. <laughs> Let's see if it works. So obviously, I'm going to have to take these change out these strings. But let's put this back together and uh, and I'll show you how to do that now. What you want to make sure and do, like I said before, is you've got two benders. What I could see people getting confused about is which one goes where. Just make sure that they those end pieces wrong camera. Make sure those end pieces face each other, right? Like that. So it would go in like that to where they face each other. Or um, this part here, that part there is going to go on the inside. And then you have this. Let's do this one. You have that washer, the, the nylon washer that goes on the outside. that there's that nylon washer and so this dowel rod is cool because you can just put it through there All right we're gonna put it through there like that and then that dowel can kind of guide you to make sure everything goes in right okay so once it's say you can use that dowel like that and then that, that way it's all set up. It's all uh, centered right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to put in the little bar thing. Little bar. And I'm just going to put that in to there. And I guess I could have done the other one too like that. So just grab that. Make sure you grab the nylon washer. We're going to put that. That's going to that part that sticks out is going to face you know inward and make sure that that part is facing the other part the other need to know what those things are called little peg metal peg there so what i can do now is just put the use the dowel on the other end all right like this and get that lined up Okay, so they're all lined up, and then I just push that, that metal part just goes right in. And there we go. I just installed the bender. That was super easy. Okay, so um, now here's the other thing is we probably want to adjust it a little bit to make it give us some room here. So you've got this, uh, this Allen wrench. Right, and you have the, all these these different parts here to uh, to adjust it. So what these front ones do is that's going to adjust uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Let's see here. So these these two adjust how far these or the direction those go. Right, loosen those up. So I'll just loosen them up to the way my Duesenberg is. Okay, that's not bad. And then these are going to adjust how far back and how far forward it goes. Let's loosen those up a bit so it can go back. Right, we want it to 
come needs to come up some, right? So I'm loosening these back ones. See how it comes up? And then these the middle ones here is going to be where it stops. So I'm just going to loosen those up to about about right there. I don't know. I'm just kind of testing it out. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to change out these strings, the second and third string. I need to change those out so that, um, well, so that I can put a new string on there and put it in the right place because I don't think there's any way of, of saving the strings that's on there unless I unwind them totally and then put them back on, but then the windings will all be weird. So let's take these strings off now and uh, put, some, put some new strings on. Okay, so before I put these strings on, I just wanted to talk about you know what brand of strings I use and the, the gauge and all that and where I get them. First of all, um, I've found that these Diodario NYXL strings are really strong, like uh, they call them high carbon steel, but I, um, they're supposedly really strong strings, right? So I put them on my Duesenberg <clears throat> and on the second string, and I've yet to break that second string. It's uh, and I'm playing that thing every day, you know. So they seem to be real strong. And what you want to do is you want to get the for the second string, you get the uh, <clears throat> 0.018. And that's a solid string, high carbon steel single. And then on the third string, that needs to be a wound string. So I'm using a 0 0.026 nickel wound string on the third string. Okay. And um, once again, NYXL, they cost a lot more than just a regular string. But I think in the long run, if they don't break, they should be... Uh, maybe pay for themselves, right? Now I buy these in bulk, you know, about 10, 10 strings or so. And uh, I get them on this website called stringsbymail.com. The guy's great. He, he, he ships them off real quick. He signs the, uh, at least he, he has been, you know, signs the, uh, the invoice saying thank you. So it seems to be a, you know, it's a pretty small business. So I like helping out those small businesses stringsbymail.com nyxl okay once again 0 0.018 second string 0 0.026 third string so let's put these on i guess i can take this tape off now can i there we go that tape worked pretty good actually you just gotta make sure you're you know you're pretty exacting with it okay so we want to put it through, put it through the back here. Put the string through the back. Bring it up over the bridge, like that. Okay, and then we're just going to take this ball end right here, and we're going to put it right through that peg. Cool. Now, from my experience. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put a little piece of tape on that ball end because I bet that thing's going to want to fall out. And if you put a little piece of tape there, let's see if that'll hold it. I'll take that off in a second. And I'll go ahead and put the other one in there too. Here's some needle nose that should hold it right. It just wants to spin on me. There we go. Once again, I'm just going to put a little piece of tape there so it doesn't pop off. There we go. Okay, so let's wind these strings up. And I don't do much special as far as like, you know, I know some people do some fancy stuff with the strings on the peg. I just really, I got one of these string winders here. So put it through a few times let's get it lined up right okay looks like we're good there and we've got benders going let's move back to the benders and and uh, get this all tuned up okay so I'll go ahead and remove my tape it was holding those 
into the pegs. So what we want to do, you know, I always suggest to have a plug-in tuner for electric instruments. So I'll do that, get my tuner going. And uh, let's just see what we got here. I'll tune my other strings up first. Now, the problem I'm going to see right off the bat is I'm up pretty high, so I might want to... I'm going to tighten up these middle ones just so I don't bend it too far at first and break the string. Right? Before I get the string real tight and then just slam on the bender and then totally break the string that I just changed out. Kind of putting it kind of ba basically back where it started, I guess. At least closer to that. So that, that back one, that's going to adjust the angle of your benders. So that's really bending it quite a bit. It's probably going to be way too much. Yeah, so you're dealing with a combination of just new strings and the benders. So it's going to take a while to, to get this thing in tune. Let me go ahead and stretch these strings out. And I'll get back with you. Okay, while those strings are stretching out, let me uh, change out this low string. As you can see, it's just very, very bendy, right? So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to take this out, and uh, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you the string, the thicker string that I'm going to put on there. We'll see. It may lose some sustain, probably. A lot of times thicker strings like that, you lose some sustain, but let's just give it a try, see what happens. Okay, so I've got um, basically two gauge, real thick gauge strings for that low and, and open D tuning. Keep in mind, I've got a 059, also called a 59, and a 060, oops, also called a 60. I'm gonna put the 60 on because in open D tuning in, uh, with a short scale lap steel like this, that's where you get the real bendy parts, right? So let's see. The the thing that I've heard, I got on a, a lap steel lunatics, and they were saying how the 60 is about as thick as you can go. Let's make sure it can go through the, the tuning peg. This this is like a bass string, man. We'll see how it goes. Let's see if it can go through the tuning peg here. Oh yeah, we're good. So just bring it through the back here. There we go. Now I probably don't need to wrap this a whole lot of times around, but I'll just give myself a little bit of space here. See what we got. Here's my string winder. It's much easier on this side to wind the strings. Okay, everybody, we got it all. The string changed up. My strings are uh, uh, all stretched out and loosened up, and I've got the benders in tune, and I love it. I love it, especially for the money. $229 or something like that for the lap steel. I did change out the, thir the, the sixth string to this 60.060. Uh, <laughs> That made a huge difference. Check out the benders. Sounds pretty good. And, you know, I was worried about this bridge, you know, being too... Let's see if I can zoom in. 
being too high, right? But it actually, it actually is pretty good. It because the 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 angle that that goes over, right? It only goes. It doesn't go real deep down, so it just goes right over the top, just clears that bridge. And there's about where I, I have my benders, right like that, and uh, about that high. And it did take me a little bit of time to kind of dial in, you know, the back and the middle as far as, you know, how far I wanted it to go down. My advice is, is tighten the middles down so that when you initially bend it down um, you don't break a string you know don't loosen it up real high and then just slam it down it'll go way too high and you'll probably break a string so just take your time with that and that is about how I've got mine set up if you can see that there it's cool it, it really works <laughs> And I kind of like having these not real loose, but just enough to where I can kind of bend, move them around, right? And that's with that that first adjuster right here that you do. Let me see if you can see that. I mentioned that before, but just so you are clear, right? So as I can move that like that, you know, it's not moving real. I don't have it real tight or real loose so that I can kind of slightly adjust it. That seems to work nice. I don't like having it just rock solid where it's just stuck in one place. So once again, let's see what we got here. If you're curious uh, of an inexpensive uh, way to, to get into the bender world with lap steel, this seems to work. Just have some patience and uh, you know, take some time, small movements on the benders to get it in tune. And uh, also highly suggest to change out the low string if you're going to stay in open D at least. To that. 60, 59 or a 60 on your low string, 0 0.059 or 0 0.060. Okay, I'll fiddle with this some more, guys. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye.